So if you click on this video, you know why you're here. So I have two trailers here. I've got an F Max 212 and an F Max 216. They're both hydraulic dovetail, but I'm going to show you the biggest differences between these trailers, and I want to try to get rid of a lot of misconceptions that even I believe, and that's what we're about to get into. What comes standard with each trailer? With an F Max 212, this is not an OEM coupler. This is a Spartan Hitch. Um, they just come with a regular Bulldog coupler. And you can see this is a cylindrical tube here. The next thing with an X-Max 212, which is the biggest, is uh, there's a standard slipper spring suspension. And you just have regular eight by uh, six and a half lug pattern uh, with the lippered axles. And you can see the slipper suspension right here. So that is a standard uh, suspension system on a 212 or a 210. So with that typical slipper spring uh, standard, they are standard with 16 inch wheels and tires. However, you can upgrade that to a Hutchins suspension with 17 and a half wheels and tires on the trailer. Um, the decks are the same. Um, if you want to get uh, full metal cleats all the way down the runners, you can do that. But your uh, black rubberized oak, or excuse me, your black rubberized pine treated uh, is standard on the hydro dovetails unless you want to change that to something else compared to the 216 you have well on this one i have the 40k coupler system on this trailer so much heavier duty way more stout let's just go straight down to the suspension so standard with an f max 216 is 17 and a half inch wheels and tires and the 270 by 8 lug pattern uh, this so these are 16k axles right here on this trailer standard is the hutchins suspension system where everything's adjustable and gets rid of the slipper spring where there's prone to excessive wear and just the hutchins style is just way heavier duty overall there's better cross bracing uh, between the frames and the axles it's just a much better heavier duty system i've never had it happen to me but i've seen some photos and some videos well photos mainly where on a slipper spring system, if you start turning too sharp with an extremely heavy load on, there's been times that that cross tube can collapse on itself, which is not cool. That is extremely rare or nearly impossible to do with a Hutchins system, like on F Max 216. But remember, you can get that option on the 212s. Uh, I'm not too sure about the 210s. Differences between these two trailers, being a 212 and a 216, you can get everything. That's on this trailer on a 212. So you can see this one has regular screw jacks uh, you do by hand. And over here I have the hydraulic jacks on this trailer, which is nice because these trailers are really heavy and you pretty much have to do the slow speed to raise this trailer or even lower it. So that trailer did have the standard jacks. I was talking about the slow speed for these system right here, a two speed jack. And of course, my trailer, the 216, has the hydro jacks right here. I mean, there's different kind of tail options you can get for either of these trailers. They're not only hydro dovetail. And then amongst, um, I have on this trailer the, the deck lights over here. This trailer does not. And another thing also, uh, spare tire is not an option. You have to purchase that when you build your trailer. I did that with this one, as you can see. Um, Honestly, getting this spare wheel and tire from Diamond C is cheaper than trying to find one online. Um, another thing I often on my trailer compared to this one is you can see there's no winch basket there or a receiver. Um, I made sure to do that with mine. As you can see, I have my winch on there right now. And then I just have a quick disconnect for the battery. So what's the difference between a 12,000 pound axle and a 16,000 pound axle? And it's very minimal. You'll believe it. It's just a thicker, larger axle tube housing 
um, the brakes are the same and the bearings are the same size on these axles. Uh, the biggest change is just the axle tube to handle the excessive weight. I mean, yes, there's a different lug pattern on that. Um, and as far as I've read and I've seen, it just it's a better spread load for the wheels. Um, and it does help out the hubs a little bit and the spindles on the trailer, just a better weight distributed system compared to the eight by six and a half. But believe it or not, the brakes and the bearings are the same size between your 10, 12, and 16,000 pound axles. The next, which uh, is something I believed in the beginning where, is the frame different from the 212 from the 216. They are the exact same frame, exact same height, and the exact same thickness on the frames. I'll even prove it to you. Here's one, here's a 212. The neck, we have about, we got 12 and 5 eighths. And here's on the 216. I'm a 12 and 5 eighths, or 12 and a half pretty much. And then the same thing for the main center of the frame. So I can't get all the way to the top because of the lumber here. But we're just gonna do it like that, which is 15 and a half on the thickest part of the frame here. And then right here, same area. Um, for some reason, I'm at 15 and three quarters here. Um, I'm not sure. That's just a very small, minute difference. However, pretty much identical frames. It's almost, you can say the same trailer. However, so small incremental differences, definitely being the axles and the suspension system compared to the coupler. Uh, the chains are much larger on the 216 compared to the 212. You can just see the difference right here. You got inch and three eighths. This right here is about an inch. Um, I mean, there's just heavier overall construction going on in this trailer to support that weight. Uh, bracing wise, I see the exact same braces um, on these trailers between and inside the neck. You know, you got all your gussets here on the frame rails uh, for the neck. Both of them just have the box here. You can see that, uh, that one got tagged by a little bit of ice, but so, I mean, you got your battery, your hydraulic pump. I got my few little accessories here. Um, and then you got your valve right here to switch from your uh, feet to the actual tail. And uh, if you guys have been watching my videos, you can see I forgot to do a solar panel. So I installed this one myself. I do have a video on that on a few older videos uh, to keep the battery tendered up on this trailer. This trailer does not have a solar panel, and those are another option that you can get uh, from Diamond C directly. So both trailers, they also have this chain rack on the newer style trailers. They have this chain rack already uh, pre-installed on all your uh, trailers. See, same thing here. And the other cool, cool thing that uh, 212 has it too, is there is LED lights here on the trailer. Uh, when your headlights are on the truck, this entire box illuminates so you can see better. To, to get whatever you need out of the trailer. So slight differences, and believe it or not, even though that this is a 32 foot deck trailer, and this is a 30 foot deck trailer, this trailer actually weighs more than the 212. Uh, this is about uh, 7,700 pounds, and my trailer is 8,250 pounds, which, on, which is on the actual sticker. And I actually have weighed this trailer before, and, this, and the tags they put on these trailers are nearly pretty much exactly what these trailers weigh. So they do a good job there. Um, color choice is your choice. Um, they do have their own standard uh, colors that you can do on these trailers. But I just wanna get rid of a few of those misconceptions. Um, a lot of what's on my trailer is additional add-ons. There's one thing I forgot to do is get the rough oak flooring. Um, I'll show you why already. Both trailers have the pine wood decking and uh, about a few weeks ago, I busted off this plank and uh, I finally got around to it, getting it replaced. It's an easy replacement, but if it was oak, it probably wouldn't have done that. And uh, it doesn't help having steel track machines going up and down a trailer. Um, that's just gonna do any kind of excessive wear on, your, on, on the tail of these trailers. I mean, what works best for you? I mean, you say, I mean, we're getting close. For a 32 foot trailer, you're looking at about a 700 pound difference in weight. Uh, some people that's a big that's a that's a huge plus if you're trying to 
to be towing underneath a Class A if you want to stick around the 26,000 pound uh, capacity. And uh, I mean, I know this trailer wouldn't be the one you would want. You'd rather just go with like a, su a Super 10 system. Um, but I'll tell you, with a 32 foot deck trailer, um, it is nice because you get a little bit of additional tongue weight from the trailer because the 30 is actually so short because it's only an 18 foot deck uh, rather than the true 20 foot deck. Um, there isn't as much tongue weight to start off with on these trailers. So a lot of times your coupler and your ball will bounce and you'll kind of hear that in the truck. I've gotten used to it. I don't even really notice it anymore. But when I first started towing it, I heard that noise. I'm like, what the heck is that? But that's what this trailer is doing because a 60-40 balance on this thing. There isn't that much tongue weight to start off with with the trailer alone. But other than that, uh, a 30-foot deck has been working perfectly for me. I can fit this wheel loader on there, a skid steer. And when I had my Kubota uh, KX040, I can fit the skid steer or M62. Uh, these combinations of 10,000-pound machines fit on that trailer two of them no problem every single time i've even had my skid steer and the water buffalo on top of this trailer it handles it just fine it's nice to have a little bit of extra room but i tell you what the amount of areas i've already gone in with this 30 foot deck it felt like if i had any longer trailer i probably would have been screwed honestly i would have gotten stuck somewhere this trailer has been absolutely perfect uh, lengthwise, weight wise, and just the capabilities of it. Because pretty much for everything I tow is either two small pieces of machinery or one big piece of machinery where I can't put anything else on the deck. And if I do, it's just implements like maybe another skid steer bucket, maybe all the buckets for the excavator, something like that. But I'm not going to be putting a whole nother machine on there. That's going to put me way overweight. So those are the common things. Um, if you guys have any additional questions about the trailers, what's the real, uh, any other differences I might have not mentioned? Comment down below, I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, Diamond C does a really good walk around on these trailers. Um, I hope just doing this small walk around kind of helped you guys out to pick what you wanted. Just remember, if you want hydraulic jacks, that's an option. It's not cheap, but in my, it's worth it. If you ask me, it's 100% worth it to do. I, I absolutely love them. Um, just makes life easier. And the mount that I disconnect and connect the trailer it's a huge help in hand. Maybe for a lot of PU guys that all you do is just have the trailer connected to the truck 24-7. That is your job. Maybe you can save the two or three grand. I forget how much it is now. And just get yourself a regular screw jack. You can get two speed systems also for these things. Um, it feels like this is the single speed. Usually kind of the best bet way to go. But the other jacks are a lot heavier duty if you get a two speed system. Um, hydraulic, hydraulic dovetail options are not cheap. Uh, these are both op optioned out for the hydro tail. So just, you know, use what you think you need best and what you want to do with your trailer. Uh, so maybe that's just not, not your thing. Maybe you just want to get a straight deck. Maybe you want to get uh, like some monster ramps or something like that. Uh, Diamond C has all these different kind of tails that you can put on, this, on these trailers to best suit your needs. Um, but again, the biggest thing is where do you want to put your money? Where do you want to spend it? Do you want to get a 40K? 216 system or do you want the lighter trailer you don't need as much beef and go with a 212 because there is going to be a price difference on that too i mean this is going to be a little bit cheaper than a 216 system use your best judgment i've always been someone i'm going to buy a little bit bigger than what i know i need however i'm making sure it's not so big where it's going to inhibit it, inhibit me and that's something with the capability of the trailer is no big deal but the thing is the length it's a lot harder if you think about it just to go and buy a 36 a 40 foot trailer like yeah i got a huge trailer i'm like all right where are you going from day to day with this trailer what are you doing with it remember the bigger the trailer the more heavier the trailer is the less you can put on the deck of that trailer a 30 foot trailer on the f max series is the smallest deck configuration that you can go do on these trailers 30 foot is the minimum and then you can go up from there and uh, when you pass a 34 foot deck, you can get spread axle and all this type of stuff. You start getting super complicated. I'm assuming if you guys are trying to build something like that, you know exactly what you want, what you need and what's desired. Uh, other options on these trailers, you can get airbags on these trailers over the Hutchins suspension. Um, there would be a compressor and everything, all that type of stuff. You can even lift the, the forward axle on the trailer, all this type of stuff. I didn't need anything like that. I just needed a really good heavy duty suspension. Um, I do like the Hutchins system much more over the slipper spring system. It just, it's way more stout. But again, 
where do you want to spend your money on the trailer? Do you want to go balls to the wall and get something as heavy duty as you possibly can? Or do you need something that's a little bit less excessive in a way? Do you really need something that heavy duty? So make sure you, you know, bring all those into your shopping, I guess, uh, or your, when you're building your trailer. There's so many different ways that you can go. Um, I'll tell you one thing that I made a mistake on, especially because I'm a hauling equipment. I'm hauling my own equipment for my excavation business. One thing I regret from my first trailer was buying a straight tail. A dovetail is nice. But then on the flip side, having a straight tail is also beneficial where going in and out of areas, my tail doesn't smack the ground or get hung up or anything like that. That's some of the things you got to think about. This being a hydro dovetail, the tail is as high as it can possibly be, just like a straight trailer, but you have a nice seldom ramp, a 12-foot ramp going back down to the ground. So, I mean, those are kind of nice to have. So just make sure you go through all your options and what you truly want on a trailer. But if you guys are wondering what the true difference is between these two trailers, I just explained it for you, hopefully the best possible. Um, a few other standard things. You got your step, step, box, box, and that's to house your battery and your hydraulic pump. Honestly, I should have made a list to kind of go down with these, uh, with these two trailers, but uh, I'm kind of starting to lose daylight. Today got really busy. I just wanted to get, these, get this video out as soon as possible uh, so you guys can actually view it. Uh, before this trailer leaves. This is not my trailer. This is my friend's trailer. But this is my trailer He's coming back a little bit later on tonight to come pick it up So I just wanted to get this video out there uh, before this thing leaves uh, Sam from V Belt and Son He also has an FMAX 212, but if you look at his trailer, it's completely different than this 212 He has the oak wood decking. He has the hydraulic jacks He actually has the Hutchins suspension system with the 17 and a half, 17 and a half wheels and tires on that trailer so he's got the heavy duty package in the lighter weight trailer um even though i just measured it and they're the same frame these trailers are just a little bit lighter but remember with the 212 you still have this coupler there's nothing you can do about that until, unless you want to cut it off so just remember that you can only get a 40k rated system with a 216 uh, where they have all the beefed up components on this trailer so just remember that thing, um, you know, option out the trailer for what you think you need it for and what you want. Trust me, it's a, it's a big investment. Spend the money now and enjoy it later. Um, I've definitely figured out over time, if you go cheap on something, there's just going to be a bigger regret down the road. Because as far as I've noticed, like with buying my truck, with buying this trailer, I haven't regretted anything about it. Like I bought the truck I wanted and I was like, I want a few, you know, extra gizmos and gadgets on the fifth gen. I want like the nice heads up display, whatever the heck. And on this trail, I was like, I want the hydro jacks. I want all this stuff. And uh, I've never once regretted it. I feel like a lot of time when you try to go a little bit cheaper on something, you're gonna regret it down the road. Because remember, if you're buying for this for your work and for your job, it's there to make your life easier and pay for itself make your life easier while you're buying it might as well right uh other than that comment down below what you guys think i hope i did an okay walkthrough on everything on these trailers there's tons more about these trailers that you can go on diamondc.com and look at um and option out everything you want between the, the two between the fmax 212 and between the fmax 216 build them how you want and i hope a little bit of real life you know video might help you guys out make your choice uh, maybe you, an F Max 212 will be just what you need. You don't need the heavy duty crazy stuff. Uh, maybe you you want the crazy heavy duty stuff. I'm over here towing D3, D4, D5 KXL dozers with this trailer. I have a Cat 310, and I'm also towing with this trailer. Um, all underneath uh, my Ram 3500 truck. Um, a 310 I cannot put on this trailer. It will be completely overweight. But with a 310 on this trailer, believe it or not, I still have another. 4,000 pounds to spare before this trailer even comes close uh, to hitting max capacity. And when I say 40K rated trailer, remember this is 32,000 pounds worth of holding its own weight. The additional 8,000 pounds is where you get your 40K is weight distributed to the truck. The trailer itself, 32,000 pounds. With truck, 40,000 pounds. You gotta account weight distribution. 
of what this trailer is capable of. Just So just remember that. I know you're saying, oh, it's only two 16,000 pound actor. That's only 32,000 pounds. No, plus weight distribution is where you get your finalized uh, gross combined weight distribution between your truck and your trailer. So just remember that. You know, and one more thing to add, guess what? When you buy a 212, you don't have to pay 12% FET tax on this trailer because it's a 25,900 pound uh, tag trailer. This trailer being tagged for 32,000 pounds, guess what? I get to pay 12% over the top of my sales tax that I paid for this trailer to register it because now it's a completely commercial trailer. Being tagged for 30,000 pounds, now you get to pay additional taxes because you're in the next step up. But when you get this kind of a trailer right here, you don't have to pay that 12% fat tax. So think about that. Um, the government's out there to get you, try to get every little last penny they possibly can out of you. So that's one more thing I want to add in. So other than that, comment down below what you guys think. If you have any other additional questions between these two trailers, a 212 and a 216, don't ask me about any other trailers because I don't have any other trailer from time to see. Comment down below. Tell me what you think. I hope this guy helps you out. Other than that, thank you for watching. Have a good one.